Hey fellow Force users, what is up? It's Jasmine, the Sopatano fan, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, so guys, long time no see. Last time I saw you all was for Moon Knight, and now it is time for probably one of the most anticipated TV series ever, and that is Kenobi. Yeah, as you can see, I'm wearing my Darth Maul shirt today. Um, just because, you know, Darth Maul and uh, Kenobi have been longtime enemies. And there's this clip, honestly, of Sam Witwer saying Kenobi that is just golden. Nobody says it as good as him. Kenobi. <laughs> Kenobi! So I figured why not wear this shirt today? Um, anyways, guys, yeah, so it's time for Kenobi. We've been waiting for this series for so long. Um, it's been teased, we've seen the artwork, and now is the time to actually finally have a look at it. I believe it's set 10 years after Revenge of the Sith. I've only actually watched the first trailer. I've decided to not watch too many teasers because I actually do want to um, go in a little bit blind and have certain things surprise for me. So based off of the first trailer though, it does seem like Obi-Wan has been in hiding um, and I think he sees a young Luke at some point and something forces him out of hiding and it looks to be the Inquisitor as we saw two of the Inquisitor, or I think we saw three Inquisitors. Yeah, we saw the Grand Inquisitor, the fifth brother, and then there's another Inquisitor, a black woman, and so we still have to figure out um, who she is. She seems like she's a new character. Yeah, so it should be interesting to see what exactly happens to drive him out of hiding. Um, and then, of course, there is, you know, going to be the long-awaited duel and rematch between Obi-Wan and his former Padawan, Anakin Skywalker, aka Darth Vader. So that should be really interesting because we've never really seen Hayden Christensen as Darth Vader like this before. We saw him become Darth Vader at the end of Revenge of the Sith, but now to kind of see him once again meet up with Obi-Wan as Ian McGregor, um, that should be pretty huge because prior to that, we hadn't seen them face off again until A New Hope, right? So yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I think the series is gonna be amazing. It looks like the first two episodes dropped actually, so we have quite a bit to get into today. So let's not waste any time, guys. Let's dive right into episode one of Kenobi and check it out. Yes, and also I had um, this video sent to me on YouTube. If you guys wanna check it out, link is in the description. It's by someone who made a fun little uh, fan film for General Grievous, it's animated. So yeah, definitely check it out and show some love. I love seeing things like that in the Star Wars community, people kind of showing their creative side and having a little fun with it. Um, and of course, if you guys have any content that you you know want to send me or you think that I would like, uh, you know by all means, feel free to send it. Um, but yeah, but definitely show him some love and check it out. I'll leave the link below in the description. And without further ado, let's uh, get on to today's video. They even have the title a long time ago. In a galaxy far, far away. Are they gonna show us Revenge of the Sith? You refer to the prophecy of the one who will bring balance to the force. Are they gonna show us anything from the Clone Wars by any chance? Would they do that? I am ready to face the trials. Hmm. Darth Maul, see? It's a good idea. I wear the shirt. <laughs> oh damn! Yeah, that part was hard to watch. Prentice Skywalker. Mm -hmm. I definitely see parallels there with Anakin and Ahsoka because Ahsoka was supposed to be Obi-Wan's Padawan and then he kind of handed her over to Anakin the same way that Qui-Wan handed Anakin over to Obi-Wan. Padme. For you, my master. I have failed you, Anakin. Man, that movie was one of the best in the whole franchise. The high ground. Mm. That movie was honestly so tragic. It killed off everyone. Mm -hmm. I will take the child and watch over him. I always thought they did Luke a little dirty. They made him go to Tatooine and then Leia got to live royalty. But it turned out well for Luke, nonetheless. Wow, guys. Here we go. I love that they gave that little recap because even people who who forgotten or, or haven't seen the prior movies, they could technically still watch this just based off of the recap. Who is this here? Oh, this is a red. I was gonna say I'm like, wait, is this a new Jedi Temple? Because didn't Revenge of the Sith happen? Is that where 
That's not where Anakin comes in, right? Like one of the young ones asks him what to do and then he kills them. What Jedi Master is that? Mm -mm. That's nuts. That was Kanan. No, it didn't be Kanan. It's Master because she died in the Bad Batch. We saw her die in the Bad Batch. Oh my goodness. What an intro. I love how the eye on Kenobi is the lightsaber. Okay, 10 years later, yeah. The Jawas. <laughs> Mm, that looks like an Imperial ship. It's probably one of the Inquisitors. Maybe the black girl that we saw in the trailer? Oh, it's the Grand Inquisitor! And the Fifth Brother! Oh, and the girl! All three of them. Okay guys, let me see how I feel about the design. I haven't decided yet. Because they definitely look a lot different than from Star Wars Rebels. Hmm. I'm getting parallels to the Ahsoka novel when the Inquisitor was sent to look for her. Mm -mm, Moses Ingram looks so cool. She looks pretty badass. Wait, that's not a clone, is it? In actuality, I would say the Jedi hunt themselves. <laughs> the Jedi cannot help what they are. Their compassion leaves a trail. Steps in and saves your saloon. You offer him a place to hide. Mm. Travel quickly. His compassion. Ooh, his eyes look kind of creepy. Doing. Oh. So in that case, they weren't even. Were they even particularly talking about Obi Wan or just Jedi in general? Because they just found him there. Damn. He just stopped her. What? You didn't want her to kill him? He is not yours to find. We are past this third sister. Oh, third sister. That's who she is. Okay. Station with Kenobi or I will relieve you of your duties. I see. So he just is interested in hunting all Jedi. She specifically wants Kenobi. But the whole speech was about that guy that they just found in the saloon. Is this where Kenobi is? He's 100% not wrong what he said though about the Jedi having to help people because that's what Ahsoka did too in the novel. And then eventually, you know, she kind of got exposed and then forced her out of hiding. Yeah, we're definitely gonna see him here. Yeah, this part I remember from the trailer actually seeing him. That's him there, right? Yeah, it looks like him. I recognize the hair. Kenobi! Kenobi. Is he taking some? Yeah. Wow. He honestly still looks so good. Revenge of the Sith was what, 17 years ago? He still looks like he's barely aged. Hmm. Obi-Wan's gonna give him his, I guess. Oh, <laughs> he gave him the piece of meat. I wonder if anyone's with him or... Is he just entirely alone? Any droids, perhaps? Damn. Such a lonely life, eh? Oh my god, not these guys again. <laughs> you had some parts stolen. They need new processing. Oh my god. These guys are such swindlers. You're going to steal my parts and then sell them back to me. Could you at least clean them first? <laughs> I love how he knows that he's ripping him off, but he just doesn't really care. Wait, that Jedi's old ship? Who? Is it the same one that we saw at the beginning? I've heard the Jedi are all but extinct. Not Ahsoka. <laughs> <laughs> Cut my man a break, it's so hot in Tatooine, looks like. Wow, he has nightmares. Hmm, wow. He's talking to him like his force ghost? Hmm. 
I wonder if we'll get at least Liam Neeson's voice somehow, because I kind of get the impression that he's spoken to him before. His force ghost, so maybe we'll see it later in the episode, or in the series. Oh, is this where he's keeping an eye on Luke? Yeah. But hold on, can he actually meet Luke right now, though? Before A New Hope? Because I don't know if, if A New Hope is when he's supposed to meet him for the first time. Oh, That's like the one thing bringing him joy, I guess. Because I guess he represents the future and he's also um, kind of the legacy of his old friend, you know, Anakin. He quite literally is the new hope, right? Hmm. Did he just, where did he drop that off? Oh shit, someone's watching him. I bet you it's Moses Ingram. He senses something now. Oh, it's the, oh, it's the Jedi. You have no idea what I've been through. He's probably followed there though, man. I don't have a good feeling about this at all. I have a bad feeling about this. You have to help me. Take this and bury it in the ground. You were once a great Jedi. The time of the Jedi is over. So now we know in the trailer, I think I remember asking in my trailer reaction video who Obi-Wan was talking to because he was saying things like the war is over and the time of the Jedi is, is over. And I guess now we know who he's talking to. He's talking to him. Who's this? Is this Leia? This must be Leia. Yeah, I think so. Oh my goodness, it's a young Leia. <laughs> that is so cute. Is that Leia? Oh. Twisted you would find it amusing, your highness. So Leia's just trolling them. <laughs> that must be her, I think. Yeah, so she'd literally be. Ten here. Pleasure love, boring. <laughs> Help? Later, maybe? Leia Organa. <laughs> That's so how a young Leia would act. <laughs> no Lola for the rest of the day. Leia and Lola. What's all the matter? I really am. I promise I won't do it again. She's lying. <laughs> She's gonna do it again. Who are you doing that? <laughs> oh shit, someone's spying on her too. I don't feel like it's Obi-Wan. I don't know who that person is. I couldn't tell if it was the Grand Inquisitor or not. It didn't look like it. I see, so he goes to his work. His work drops him off in this town. And then he takes his camel or whatever shit from don't there. need anything from you then it's just a toy it's a lot more than that oh uh, yeah he, so he was dropping it off for luke but yeah so he does that so no one knows where he's staying i guess when the time comes he must be trained like he trained his father ouch man oh shit they're back oh he better hide especially from this girl she has a specific fixation with him. We need to know where he is. Ah, oh, fuck. You will be rewarded well. Or you'll be punished. Riva! Hands go first! Mm -mm. Oh, Riva is her name? She seems to be the most brutal of the three of them. We're not under the Empire. Oh my god. Damn. Damn. This girl's cold. Oh no. You know something. She's eyeing him. This girl's kinda scary, I'm not gonna lie. You think you could protect him from me? Tell me where the Jedi is, or this man and his family die. That escalated quickly. Someone's gonna rat eh? I think. I think she might kill him. Cause we don't see him later, do we? The lightsabers look good in this series, by the way. No doubt that sister. Ho 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 ho! She really wants to go like the punishment route. Tell me or else, and they want to go the reward route. If you tell us, we'll give you this. What is it you think you will gain by capturing him? 
when I'm old. When I'm old. Huh, did something personal happen to her? That she blames Kenobi for? Didn't do it for you. What I can't understand is why Owen's so bitter towards Obi-Wan, though. If it weren't for him, Owen wouldn't even have Luke under his care. So now we're going to see Miss Leia again. Anything good today? A trade ship and an Aquilian ranger. Probably scouring for pirates. That's what I <laughs> think. Encouragement. Oh. Anytime the kid's kind of doing something rebellious or up to no good, it's always the dad that's excited. <laughs> She's right, all she does is wave. <laughs> the outer room. I didn't come here to end slavery or anything. I came to eat your food. <laughs> mm -mm. Oh, thanks, Lyo. My pleasure. Uh, Lyo. <laughs> Thank you, Jory. Don't need manners when you're talking to a lower life form. Then I guess I don't need manners when I'm talking to you. Oh, snap, Leia. Damn, with the one-liners. You're not even a real O'Donnell. Your father. You want him to like you, so you repeat what he says, even though you don't really know what it means. You've never made one decision for yourself in your entire life. Damn. Never I may not have seen much, but I can see that. Oh, <laughs> you owe him an apology. I'd rather be digested by a daffodil. Mm, she's so spunky, I love it. In a few years you'll be off to university, then you and the Senate. Senate's boring. People in itchy clothes arguing. <laughs> Not even a real or gone. Don't do the same thing. Oh, he's so sweet with her, I love her. Imagine the look on your cousin's face when you get to boss him around for real. <laughs> oh my gosh, the relationship's adorable. I love that we're getting to see this. She can't wait to get out of her clothes. She likes to um the more casual attire it looks like. Who's this person though? Wait, are those all Inquisitors there? No, they're not Inquisitors. Who are they? Some type of bounty hunters. She's quick on her feet, eh? So the advantage she has is that she's so little that she can kind of slip through these little areas that uh, they can't. They're going to kill this guy. Right, yeah, damn it. Fuck, they got her? Shit. I thought she got away. Maybe this will bring Obi-Wan out of hiding. One of those guys, I've seen that actor before. I feel like he was in Back to the Future. Wasn't he the guy that challenged Marty to a race? Miles or something? Wow, that reminds me of the Clone Wars. And just the prequel era. She needs you, Obi-Wan. Oh my gosh. This is such a parallel because Leia later reaches out to Obi Wan in A New Hope. It's been ten years. I'm not who I used to be. Oh, I could tell he's really struggling. Find someone else. Oh damn! I'm kind of cold. Who are these people? Is it possible one of the Inquisitors did that to try and draw Obi-Wan out? Like maybe Moses Ingram's character, Reva, I think is her name, the third sister. She might have orchestrated that, I don't know. But then how would she know where Leia would be? Oh, who's that? Don't tell me that's Owen. As a Jedi? The Jedi that reached out to Obi-Wan for help? Damn, they killed him? Who is this? He's headed for Dayu. Oh, be okay. There is no one I trust more with my child than you. 
He's afraid of failing, that's what it is. One last fight. That's one handy drawing. Oh shit. Oh my god. That was a nice idea. No. Who's on the front of the ship there? Oh, is he about to dig up his lightsaber right now? Who are they contacting right now? Okay, it's either, I think, Moses Ingram or Darth Vader or something. Wow, that's like epic. How do they know the exact spot? Wow. His light, is, this, is that his lightsaber and Anakin's? I think I saw two in there. He fought beside a father during the war. Yeah. He'll come. I knew it was her. That was one of my guesses, right? But the thing is, he she just said he fought alongside her father. How does she know that Anakin is her father? I thought that was supposed to be top secret. Oh, he's looking at the shuttle, so he's gonna go on it. You coming or not? <laughs> I kind of like that. I feel like she was also asking us that question, like, in general. Like, are you gonna be a Jedi now or not, you know? Kind of had more than one meaning. There it is. Him getting on that shuttle means more than one thing. It, he's going to look for Leia, but it also means that he's accepting his past again, you know, as a Jedi. Okay, so let's break down the episode um, really quickly before we go into the next one, because it is a two-part premiere. Um, yeah, so definitely not a bad start at all. I like that they had the whole recap in the beginning with Revenge of the Sith to kind of bring us to where we are now. It just refreshes our minds um, in terms of what went down and what Obi-Wan's gonna deal with going forward. And you definitely could see that in the past 10 years, Obi-Wan has dealt with a lot of guilt. You see him kind of living a very lonely life, you know, a very low-key life as well. You see him having nightmares and that sort of thing about Padme and Anakin. And I think this is a really important part of the story um, to the overall franchise. Prior to the series, we've seen, you know, Revenge of the Sith, and then we've seen A New Hope, but we haven't really gotten to see Obi-Wan grieving in the meantime, and now we're getting to see just the amount of guilt that he feels. That's kind of carried on, you know, into the end of the episode, where he doesn't want to help Leia. He's a bit, well, not that he doesn't want to, but he's hesitant to help her. And I think that's because he himself feels so much guilt from how Anakin turned out. Not only does he not want to repeat the same mistakes he made, but I think he's also kind of almost doubting his own abilities. And in Revenge of the Sith, you'll recall during their fight on Mustafar, he did say, I failed you, Anakin. And I, I think that he really meant what he was saying. He feels like he was a failure himself. We kind of got to see him deal with that guilt and the pain that he's been feeling the past 10 years over what happened and how everything ended. And he carries a lot of it with him, um, everything. And I think that him kind of observing Luke in the distance, it was easier for him to do that than go after Leia because it would still allow him to keep a low profile and also he would just be helping at a distance. He wouldn't be closely enough involved to the point where he could fail again. And so I think that's kind of why it was hard for him to get out of his comfort zone and actually now take the next step and go and rescue Leia. Yeah, like that ending scene for sure when he was getting on the shuttle, that woman, her saying, you know, are you coming or not? It's kind of like, Yes, in that moment she's talking about, are you gonna get on the shuttle? But really what she's also kind of saying to Obi-Wan and the audience is the Jedi Obi-Wan that we know, are you coming out now or not, you know? And as soon as he gives her that pass, that means yes. So now we're gonna see him start to come out as uh, the Jedi Obi-Wan that we've known um, all this time now. We see him with his lightsabers, so that was pretty cool. I have to rewatch that part again, but I think that there were two lightsabers in there if I'm not mistaken, so I, I assume it might be him, uh, his lightsaber, as well as Anakin's. And yeah, definitely kind of giving me parallels to uh, The Rise of Skywalker, and also reminds me of, you know, the Clone Wars series finale, you know, when, when Ahsoka left her lightsaber there, then Anakin found it later. So yeah, that was all really good to see. We gotta talk about Luke and Leia for a second, but first, um, let's talk about the Inquisitors real quick. We definitely now, we're in the era of the Inquisitors hunting down the Jedi, and this is also straight from the Ahsoka novel, which coincides basically with uh, Obi-Wan in terms of the timeline. In the novel, Ahsoka is also, you know, uh, being hunted by Inquisitors, they're looking for her. Yeah, they definitely bring an element of fear and darkness um, to the show, 
And you just saw the way that they were interrogating the citizens and whatnot. Reva, I think her name is the third sister. She definitely is the more violent one, it seems like, uh, the more cutthroat one. Basically willing to maim and kill whoever uh, stands in her way. It seems as though she has a specific interest in capturing Kenobi, whereas the others seem just more interested in catching Jedi, I guess, to, to please you know, Darth Vader, right? To, to give him something. Uh, and so it actually kind of makes me wonder too, did something happen in her life that she blames Obi-Wan for and that's why she specifically wants to get him? Uh, because she definitely seems fixated on that. And we even saw by the end there, as I predicted too, that she was the one behind Leia's abduction to try and bring Obi-Wan out of hiding. So we have to figure out what that is. Why is she particularly interested in Obi-Wan? The other Inquisitors, they kind of take a different approach of wanting to reward citizens instead. And just shows the various ways that the Empire controls people. It's either through rewards, you know, offering to give them things in exchange for information, or it's through punishment. So we kind of saw both strategies used there. And a lot of what the Grand Inquisitor was saying of the Jedi um, hunting themselves, they eventually get exposed and, and are forced out of hiding because they can't help but help people, you know. Um, a lot of what he was saying was true. And we've seen that time and time again, the Jedi, they do sometimes put themselves before others and they, they can't help but assist the underdog and you know try and help those in need. And that was actually in the Clone Wars, the Zygerian arc, a lot of what the Queen um, relied on in order to enslave the Jedi. They don't want others to get hurt, so therefore they're willing to almost sacrifice themselves so that doesn't happen. That is how they were able, to, um, she was able to enslave Anakin and Obi-Wan for some time there, right? Um, and Ahsoka too. That happened in the Ahsoka novel as well. Ahsoka kind of also finds herself unable to stay completely hidden. She does have to kind of come out every now and then to help those in need. We see the Inquisitor proved right um, by the end of the episode because he is in fact now coming out of hiding to help Leia. That could ultimately you know, be his downfall and what gets him captured in the end. We'll just have to wait and see. As far as the designs of the Inquisitors, I'm kind of I'm still a little bit on the fence. You guys let me know in the comments what you think. But I think for those of us that have watched Star Wars Rebels, it's a little bit of an adjustment on the way that the fifth brother and the Grand Inquisitor look, for sure. In Rebels, the fifth brother, he was a lot leaner looking, a lot bigger, bulkier, meaner, more intimidating. His voice was kind of deeper. And the Grand Inquisitor was also a bit different as well. But who knows? I mean, maybe it'll just take a couple episodes to get used to it. I think if I hadn't seen Rebels, I, I would you know, be fine with the design. I wouldn't really know any different. But yeah, having watched Rebels, the design takes a little bit of getting used to. But yeah, so we saw them interrogate the citizens and we got to see Owen as well. And he definitely seems to have a little bit of resentment towards Obi-Wan. And it does seem as though he blames him for what happened um, to Anakin, which is kind of unfair, you know, because he did do his best and there's only so much you can do with your student. And then eventually they have to choose their own path, right? I mean, look at Count Dooku, right? Count Dooku was trained by Yoda and look how he turned out. But then Ahsoka was trained by Anakin, and even though Anakin becomes Darth Vader, Ahsoka herself doesn't become bad, so you just never know. But there definitely seems to be resentment there, and he doesn't seem to want Obi-Wan involved in Luke's life at all. So I'm curious to see how that will um, turn out going forward, because Obi-Wan still does express an interest to train Luke when he does get older. Then speaking of Luke, and Leia, we got to see a young Luke and Leia both in this episode. That whole part of the story we've never witnessed before. We just saw them as newborns in Revenge of the Sith and then as adults in A New Hope. So now we're actually getting to see a bit of their upbringing. You see Luke, he's kind of pretending like he's in some type of speeder. You can tell right away he has an interest in flying. And, and Leia, you kind of see her, she's got a bit of a spunky personality. She doesn't really like the politics and you know, the prim and proper sort of lifestyle. And we also saw her have a disagreement with her cousin. Her cousin doesn't really believe in treating low life forms with respect, I think you believe, I believe is what he said. And she's the opposite, she believes in treating other people with respect. I definitely like the fact that we're getting to see their upbringings and it makes more sense as to how they became um, or will become the people that we know them to be in A New Hope and the rest of the original trilogy. Now we have to just see what happens with Leia being abducted now. I kind of get the sense that that might actually set the, the tone and the story for the rest of the series. Getting Leia back and bringing Obi-Wan out of hiding. But yeah, we'll just have to wait and see and find out more from the third sister and what her motives are and how the Grand Inquisitor and the fifth brother are going to react. 
when they find out what she's done. But anyways, guys, overall, great start to the series. Um, you let me know your thoughts, as always, down below in the comments. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video, um, which I'm going to do right now. Until next time, guys, take care and see you for episode two.